Greetings, I'm Luna. Welcome back to Luna Oi. Shh, I can't read the freaking teleprompter without my glasses. All right, that's better. You're probably wondering what's up with Luna's amazing dream. Well, this is traditional Vietnamese costume from the 1800s. We call it Nhat Bing. I'm wearing this historical Vietnamese woman's clothing because today's video is all about historical Vietnamese women, revolutionary Vietnamese women to be precise, who fought for the liberation of our people going all the way back to ancient times. Through the 20th century wartime period, foreigners mostly just know about Vietnam from our modern history, especially what you might know as the Vietnam War. But the truth is, Vietnam has been struggling for independence and self-determination for at least 2,000 years. And throughout our history, Vietnamese women have played a very important role in our struggle for independence and freedom. There are hundreds of famous Vietnamese women in our history, so many that it would be impossible to talk about them all in one single video. So today, we will just be talking about a small sampling of the most famous most talented and bravest Vietnamese women in our history. Number 1. Trung Chok and Trung Nhi, the first queens of Vietnam. There are many versions of the story of Trung Chok and Trung Nhi, also known as Hai Ba Trung. But according to Đại Việt Sử Ký Toàn Thư, our oldest Vietnamese official history text, which was compiled by Vietnamese historians during the Lê Dynasty in the 17th century, Trung Chok and Trung Nhi were twins, and they were born in 1480. So I guess they were just a little bit younger than Jesus Christ. Throughout the ancient times of Vietnam, there was constant conflict between Chinese kings and our Vietnamese kings. Basically, the Chinese kings wanted Vietnamese kings to serve under them as vassals, while the Vietnamese resisted and fought for independence and self-determination. Trung Chok was the older sister and Trung Nhi was the younger. They were born in a military family in Meiling district near Hanoi today. Their father was a Lạc Tướng, a kind of high-ranking general who served as a military chef who was resisting the domination of the Chinese Han Dynasty. When Ting Chang was 19 years old, she married Thi Sạc, the son of another Lạc Tướng general, the military chef of a different Vietnamese district which was also loyal to Vietnamese people. Around that time, there was a Chinese general named Su Ding who was sent to conquer Vietnam. Su Ding declared himself governor of Zhao Chi, which was the Chinese name of Vietnam under the Han Dynasty. Su Ding raised taxes and horribly exploited the Vietnamese people. The Vietnamese people waged a strong resistance against Governor Su Ding, and Trung Chok and her husband became important leaders of this resistance. Trung Chok and Thi Sạch rose up and fought against the forces of Governor Su Ding. Unfortunately, Thi Sai was kidnapped and then executed by Su Ding. In the year 4080, Trung Chok, along with her sister Trung Nhi, appeared to the Vietnamese people to stand up and fight against the enemy and declared independence for Vietnam. The Trung sisters famously rode elephants into battle and fought personally against the governor Su Ding's army. The revolution of the Trung sisters was supported by many other ethnic minorities in Vietnam at that time. In fact, over 15 different ancient tribes of various ethnicities came together in an alliance which came to be known as the Viet people. This is the origin of the modern name Vietnam, and the first of many times that different ethnicities of our land would come together to fight for our collective freedom. At the end of the revolution, Trung Chok and Trung Nhi successfully took control of 65 districts and cities of Vietnam, and the two sisters became the first female rulers of Vietnam. Three years after they became queens, in the year 4380, the Chinese Han Dynasty sent a huge army to destroy our newly born queendom. Trung Chok and Trung Nhi lost the fight, and to avoid being tortured by the enemy, they jumped into the Han River when they were just 29 years old. Beside this official story of history, there are also many other versions of the stories about the Trung sisters. One of the stories that I found very interesting says that the Trung sisters were actually not related to each other. They found each other and became something like a lesbian couple. Thi Sek, husband of Trung Chak, was kidnapped, and Su Ding tried to use him as bait to force them to stop fighting. Trung Chak and Trung Nhi refused this offer. 
According to this story, the Jung sisters held a funeral for him before he even died, and right after that, the sisters started their resistance to stop shooting and warn. This is just one of many lessons and stories of the Jung sisters, just like there are many variations of stories of ancient heroes in most civilizations. Number 2. Lê Chân, the greatest general under the Jung sisters Lê Chân was born in Quảng Ninh, a province in North Vietnam. In the year 2080, Lê Chân was famous for being a very beautiful woman. Su Ding, the governor of the Chinese Han Dynasty, who fought the Jung sisters, wanted Lê Chân to become his concubine. When she refused him, Su Ding killed her whole family. Lê Chân then escaped and ran away towards the south. She stopped at Hai Phong, a province in northern Vietnam, and decided to stay and start building a new village as a base of operations on empty land. First, she invited villagers to live there. Then, she raised an army to protect the new village. Lê Chân was also very famous for having a very well-trained navy. In the year 40, when Lê Chân was about 20 years old, she heard about the resistance of the Chung sisters, and she immediately joined and became one of their most talented generals. After the death of the Jung sisters, Lê Chân tried to recruit more soldiers and appealed to more Vietnamese people to join her army to keep on fighting. But sadly, after the fierce fight with the enemy of the Zat Zhao mountain, when the enemy tried to capture her alive, she jumped off the cliff. She was 23 when she died. Number 3. Ba Chiu, another famous female general of ancient Vietnam. Ba Chiu means Miss Chiu in Vietnamese. Her full name is Chiu Thị Trinh. She was born in the year 226 AD in the mountains in my home province of Thanh Hoa. Yay! When Ba Chiu was born, Vietnam was once again under the control of the Chinese, this time under the Wu Dynasty. When Ba Chiu was a little girl, her father asked her about her dream for the future, and Ba Chiu said, When I grow up, I want to go fight the enemy like Chung Chak and Chung Nhi. Ba Chiu grew to be strong, tall, and deep throated with a voice described as being like a drum and a bell. Her parents died when she was just a little girl, so Ba Chiu went to live with her older brother, who was the district chief of her hometown. After years of planning and preparing, Chiu and her brother decided to start a revolution to free the Vietnamese people. Her sister-in-law at that time found out about their secret plan and was going to go and report it to the local governor who worked for the Wu Dynasty. But Chiu Thị Trinh immediately killed her sister-in-law before she could rat them out, and the siblings continued on with their plan. In the year 248, Chiu and her brother started their revolution with about a thousand soldiers. Shortly after that, her brother got sick and died. All the soldiers chose her to be their next leader to fight against the Wu Dynasty's army. Ba Chiu was also famous for riding elephants into battle, just like her heroes. The Jung sisters, Ba Chiu's army had many victories against the Wu Dynasty's army in a very short time. The king of the Wu Dynasty at that time, Sun Chen, decided to send an army of 8,000 soldiers to suppress Ba Chiu's revolution. She fought fiercely for six months but finally lost. Like the Jung sisters and Lei Chen, Bai Jiu also killed herself to avoid being captured by the enemy. This is the most famous quote of Bai Jiu when she started her resistance war. My one dream is to ride the strong wind, tread the fierce waves, kill the whale in the East Sea, regain the country, build independence and self-determination, destroy the yoke of slavery, and I will never stoop to be a concubine. Now, let's take a look at some revolutionary Vietnamese women from more modern times. The first female newspaper editor in Vietnam, Sương Nguyệt Anh. Sương Nguyệt Anh was born in 1864. Her real name is Nguyễn Thị Khuê, and she was born in southern Vietnam. After her husband died, Sương Nguyệt Anh became a teacher in her village to earn a living. She wrote many poems under the pen name Nguyệt Anh. She also joined a revolutionary movement called Đông Du, which resisted French colonization during this time. In 1917, she was invited by many Vietnamese revolutionaries to be the editor-in-chief of the newspaper Nữ Giới Chung, meaning the Bell of Women. Nữ Giới Chung was the first newspaper to be run by women and for women in Vietnam. Vietnam. Aside from educating Vietnamese women on many topics such as agriculture and business, Nữ Giới Chung specifically tried to lift up the role of women in Vietnamese society. Sương Nguyệt Anh's newspaper was very influential at that time, which was why the French colonial government decided to shut it down after just six months. 
s u n g o d a n g went back home after the French forced her to stop publishing. And after the death of her only daughter, she became totally blind. She went back to being a teacher and a doctor of Eastern medicine and died in the year 1923 in her hometown. The birth of communist movement in Vietnam in the 20th century opened a new chapter for the Vietnamese people, and especially for Vietnamese women. Sharing in the great design to defeat colonialism and imperialism, women were early founders of the communist movement in Vietnam. One of the early female communist revolutionists was Nguyen Thị Minh Khai. Nguyen Thị Minh Khai was born in 1910, and she was literally the very first female Vietnamese communist soldier. In 1926, Nguyen Thị Minh Khai joined the communist workers' movement in her hometown, and that's when she officially became the first communist fighter in Vietnamese history. Battling covertly against the French, she was a founding member of the Communist Party of Vietnam, joining as soon as it was established in 1930. She was a party cadre leader and was directly mentored by Ho Chi Minh, becoming known as one of his most talented students. Nguyen Thị Minh Khai was sent to the USSR to study Marxism-Leninism, and in 1935, she was the youngest delegate to the Seventh World Congress of the Communist International held in Moscow. In the 40s, she gave her most famous speech where she said, We, the female peasants and workers in the colonial and semi-colonial regions in the East, who suffer hundreds of times more than our Western European comrades, have finally entered the path of revolutionary struggle. Nguyen Thị Minh Khai was also the first Vietnamese youth delegate to attend the Youth International in 1935. As the first secretary of Saigon, she paid great attention to training cadres and educating workers in rural areas to build up revolutionary bases. In 1940, Nguyen Thị Minh Khai was arrested by the French colonial government. In front of the courthouse, she turned to her compatriots and bade them farewell with words deep from her heart. What we do is just, because we want our country to be independent and our people to be well fed, so we make revolution. We have not committed any crime, dear compatriots. We must destroy imperialism and feudalism in order to live a happy life. On August 28, 1941, she was brought to a hill to be executed, along with other Vietnamese communists. Standing on the high hill, she snatched the black blindfold from her eyes, threw it away, and said loudly, Dear compatriots, we must destroy the feudal empire in order to live a happy life. Long live in the Chinese Communist Party. Long live the Vietnamese Revolution. And now, allow me to introduce the brave guerrilla, the iconic martyr of Vietnam, Võ Thị Sáu. Võ Thị Sáu was born in 1933 in southern Vietnam to a very poor family. She and her brothers joined the communist movement when they were very young. From 1947 to 1949, as a young teenager, she became an assassin, primarily using grenades to kill French soldiers and their collaborators. In 1949, she was caught and arrested by the French colonial government while on a mission. She was moved to three different prisons in this one year and was horribly tortured. Communist lawyers tried to protect her from execution because at that time she was not even 18 years old. But the French military court showed no mercy and they still gave her the death sentence. This decision led to strong public opposition in both Vietnam and France. The public outcry was so strong, in fact, that the French colonial government could not execute her right away. Instead, they waited for two more years. In January 1952, when she turned 18, she was secretly moved to Gone Island, one of the worst prisons for communists in human history. Here, the French colonial government shot her to death. According to witnesses, when they brought Võ Thị Sáu out from her cell for execution early in the morning, every single prisoner stood up and demanded that they stop her execution. They screamed, protest against the shooting of Võ Thị Sáu, protest, protest, down with the French colonialists. The Vietnamese comrador who served as a warden of Gone Island prison panicked, and he ordered all the prison cells and cases to be strictly locked down. During her entire walk to the place of execution, witnesses said, Võ Thị Sáu never showed fear and never begged for her life. When the enemy covered her eyes with a piece of black fabric, she demanded them to take it off. She looked them dead in their eyes and sang the song Vietnamese Soldiers. The first volley of shots did not kill her, 
and severely injured Võ Thị Sáu continued looking her executors in the eyes and kept singing that song. The colonial soldiers were so scared that they ceased fire. The warden saw this and screamed out orders for the soldiers to keep shooting until she finally died. We have many songs and poems about her, and in 1996, Vietnam made a movie called The Girl from the Red Dirt about her to honor her sacrifices for Vietnam and for communism. Her death became a symbol of the bravery of Vietnamese people in general and Vietnamese women in particular. Next, let's talk about the only female battlefield general of Vietnam in the 20th century. Nguyễn Thị Định was born in 1920 in a farming family in Bến Tre province in the south of Vietnam. She joined the Communist Party when she was 18 years old. In 1945, she joined the Standing Committee of the Bến Tre Provincial Communist Party Committee and started training villagers in guerrilla tactics and political theory. In 1959, Nguyễn Thị Định, along with many other communist fighters, led the Đồng Khởi uprising in her hometown, Bến Tre. At first, their goal was to launch a week-long campaign for all people to rise up together to eliminate the talks of the U.S.-backed puppet regime, break the oppression, liberate the countryside, and take back the farmland. The movement received massive support from millions of southern Vietnamese people, as many other provinces also came to join the Đồng Khởi uprising. The Đồng Khởi uprising ended successfully in the 1960s, despite many attempts to shut it down from the southern fascist puppet regime led by Ngô Đình Diệm. Đồng Khởi was the cornerstone for the foundation of the National Liberation Front of Vietnam, and Nguyễn Thị Định became a founding leader of the NLF, which was the main organ of the communist resistance in southern Vietnam. Nguyễn Thị Định also was the leader of one of Vietnam's most unique armies, the Long Hair Army, an army of 5,000 Vietnamese women. Throughout the 1960s, the Long Hair Army of Nguyễn Thị Định played a vital role in the National Liberation Front of Vietnam. They worked both on the battlefield and in the rear. These mighty women developed their own tactics that have never been discussed or written about in any literature. In 1965, she became the deputy commander of the armed forces for the liberation of the South. She became well-known and well-loved for being gentle, harmonious, and an extremely talented military commander. In August 1970, the Black Panther Party in the U.S. sent letters to the National Liberation Front of Vietnam to offer help and support. Nguyễn Thị Định was the one chosen to correspond with the Black Panther Party. You have highly appreciated the close relation between our both uncompromising struggles against U.S. imperialism, our common enemy. It is well known now that the U.S. government is the most warlike, not only oppresses and exploits the American people, especially the black and the color ones, but also oppresses and exploits various people the world over by all means, irrespective of morality and justice, which they deprive by the most barbarous ways including genocide, as they have acted for years in South Vietnam. In 1974, she was promoted to become a major general of the Vietnam People's Army, and she became the deputy commander of the Ho Chi Minh campaign, which was the last campaign which led directly to the victory of Vietnam against the imperialist USA and its puppet government in 1975. In 1976, she became the first vice president of Vietnam and the president of the Vietnam Women's Union, holding both positions until 1980. Nguyễn Thị Định lived a full, happy life and died of old age in Ho Chi Minh City in 1992. Next, let's admire the most beautiful communist smile of Vietnam. Võ Thị Thắng was born in 1945 in Long An in the south of Vietnam. She joined the National Front of the Liberation of South Vietnam when she was just 16 years old. One year later, she was sent to Saigon to work as a secret agent leading the youth and student movement there. A few years later, in 1968, she was arrested on a mission by the U.S.-backed puppet regime in South Vietnam. During her trial, when she was sentenced to 20 years of hard labor by the puppet government, she answered them with a smile. Will your government survive for 20 years to keep me imprisoned? Her smile was captured by a Germanese journalist, and this picture of the victory smile became famous all over the world. Even after six years of torment and torture, Võ Thị Thắng never succumbed to the violence of the enemy. Despite extremely difficult circumstances, she used prison as an environment to practice and test her dignity, her will, and her loyalty to communist struggle. 
by March 1973. In accordance with the Paris Agreement, the enemy had to return all imprisoned revolutionary soldiers. When she was released from prison, she still held her head high with the posture of a winner. In 1975, after Vietnam won our independence, Võ Thị Thắng was voted to be a national representative. She then became the Director General of the Vietnam National Administration of Tourism, Chairman of the Vietnam-Cuba Friendship Association, and Vice President of Vietnam Women's Union, working side-by-side side with our beloved female General Nguyễn Thị Định. Võ Thị Thắng died in 2014. Fun fact about Võ Thị Thắng, her name in Vietnamese is Thắng, which literally means victory. Last but certainly not least, let's take a look at one of the main ethnic minority women who also joined the Communist Party of Vietnam and the struggle against colonialism and imperialism. Ethnic minorities played a very important part in the victory of Vietnam against the U.S. So let's take a look at one heroic female communist soldier who was also an ethnic minority. The legendary chef of the mountainous area, Y Buong, it won't belong to the Sedang ethnic minority in southern Vietnam. Today, there are about 170,000 Sedang people in Vietnam. The Sedang are part of the Dega group of ethnic minorities. A quick side note about the Dega peoples. When Vietnam was still under the French colonialism, the French colonialists lumped all the different ethnic minorities living in the central of Vietnam together and called them the Mong Thak Nhat, which is a French word meaning mountainous people. This is a racist name that came from colonial times, so I really discourage you from using this name, even though it's commonly used in the West. Instead, I suggest you to use the name Dega to refer to these peoples, because that's the term which those ethnic minorities use to refer to themselves. Anyway, back to the main story. Yi was born in 1946 in Kantum province in the south of Vietnam. She joined our communist movement from a very young age. She started as a courier of communist guerrillas in her village when she was 13 years old. From 1962 until 1972, she worked as a chef for Battalion 304. To have enough food for her comrades, she usually had to go out in the jungle to gather wild vegetables and to catch crabs, fish, and snails. She also had her own farm and donated all of the food she raised to the battalion. This is the iron pot that she always brought with her whenever her battalion moved to a new base. Not only did Yi Buong cook for the whole battalion, she also joined in the fighting many times. One time when all other soldiers went out to bring back a delivery of rice, only Yi Buong and one other soldier with three injuries were left home at the base. Suddenly, an enemy team of 10 soldiers attacked her base. Yi Buong immediately picked up a gun and some greenness to fight back. She killed four enemies in that fight. Another time, the enemy used anti-aircraft guns to attack her battalion's base at lunchtime. Instead of running to the safety of a nearby bomb-proof bunker, she bravely used her body to cover the battalion's rice pot to try to protect it. After the attack, both Yi Buong and the rice pot were buried under the dirt, and her comrades had to dig her out. When she was asked why she risked her life to protect a pot, she answered, If I died, there are still other people to cook for you. But if the rice pot was destroyed, you would not have anything to eat. I care about you, my brothers and sisters, very much. Yi Buong was severely injured in this attack, but luckily she survived and had a happy life after the war. Now, let's take a look at one more ethnic minority woman who fought fiercely during the war against the Americans. Ho Thị Đơm, originally born as Can Đơm, was born in 1940 in Thừa Thiên Huế province. She is a Paco ethnic minority. Paco is an ethnic minority in Vietnam that has a population of about 52,000 people. They have a very unique culture and language. Ho Thị Đơm joined the communist movement when she was just 15 years old, and when she turned 19, she officially became a guerrilla fighter. She was extremely brave and talented in guerrilla tactics. According to the book Ethnic Minority Heroes and Heroines of Vietnam, published in 2016, Ho Thị Đâm commanded 316 battles. In just seven of her most successful battles, her forces killed 355 enemies in total. In her entire military career, Ho Thị Đâm herself killed 716 enemies, including 47 U.S. troops and U.S. allies. She also shot down two U.S. helicopters and captured 25 enemy guns as well as lots of other military supplies. There are many stories of Ho Thị Đâm, but this one of the most spectacular. On April 3, 1969, Ho Thị Đâm led a team of four other guerrillas who were assigned to attack an entire military company which was positioned in the Abia fortification. 
the enemy were equipped with helicopters, airplanes, and artillery at that base. Hotidom and her guerrilla team fought fiercely for a day and managed to kill 51 enemies. They also seized eight guns and many other military supplies and shot down two helicopters. Hotidom herself killed 17 enemy troops in this single fight. The reason we call her Ho Thi Dom today is because Ho Chi Minh respected her so much that he granted her his own name, which was his way of personally acknowledging her as his own family member. There are thousands and thousands more women who fought and struggled throughout our history for freedom and independence. In fact, almost every family in Vietnam has women who fought and struggled for our liberation. Like my aunt, who helped clear landmines after the war, and even my mom, who was one of the toughest farmers in the village in the post-war period. You can hear her own story in her own words in this video, linked in the description. I have so many more stories to tell you about brilliant, strong and brave Vietnamese women that I want to share with you. Especially because Western media outlets have, for decades, been pushing the narrative that women did not play an important role in our revolutionary struggle, and that we just use stories like these for propaganda. This narrative is extremely racist and sexist, and it also undermines the true strength of Vietnamese people in general and Vietnamese women in particular. The truth is that women have been vital for thousands of years in our struggle for independence and freedom. I will tell a lot more stories like this in the future, so I hope you will subscribe. In the meantime, this is my advice for you. Do not mess with Vietnamese women. Okay, see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, I just want to thank all my supporters on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and my comrades on comradery.co. You are the reason I can make these videos, so thank you so much. If you want to support this channel, see the links in the description, or you can click like or share the video, that helps a lot too. And if you aren't already, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much and bye-bye!